Former DOJ spokesman Matthew Miller. Matthew, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, why are we reopening this musty box? What don't we know about what happened? Seems like we know a lot. We know a lot about what happened. What we have not seen officially adjudicated is whether Jim Comey's conduct was appropriate in the way he handled his July 5th press conference and in the letter he sent uh, to, to Congress on October 28th. Right. There were a lot of people like me who argued that he violated a number of Department of Justice rules. First, by speaking publicly about Secretary Clinton and condemning her conduct when they weren't going to bring charges. Mm -hmm. And then later, by sending that letter uh, to Congress so close to the election, which violates long-standing DOJ guidelines. So it's the Inspector General's job to look at that and then pass judgment on whether what Comey did was appropriate or not. Okay. I mean, I, I think that's not a crazy point to make in that he basically passed judgment on Secretary Clinton's behavior and she wasn't allowed to respond. So I, th I think it's, it's okay to say, you know, what was that? But this whole process began, as you'll remember. The only reason he was put in the position to do that was because the Attorney General, in effect, recused herself, Loretta Lynch, because she met on the tarmac with Bill Clinton, whose wife she was investigating, in this investigation. From what I could tell from the announcement of the AG report, IG report, rather, that's not even mentioned as something they're looking into. How can you skip that? So it's a good question. I mean, and she did sort of recuse herself. Sort of. I think, I think there are questions for the Attorney General, too. I'm not going uh, to stand here and defend her. Um, but Jim Comey was the prime mover in this case. He's the one that made the decision to come out and, and have this press conference. And then he's the one that, that made the decision to send that letter against the advice of the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General, and other senior departments. But wait a second. Sessions. You're right. He made that decision, but the only reason he was in the position to, not to be pedantic here, but I think yeah. it matters, the only reason he had to make that decision was because the attorney general for whom he works wasn't making it because she had that meeting. Now, what, first of all, that meeting, it seems to me, if you're looking into corruption during the campaign, would be the red flag. That was an un unbelievable, outrageous thing that she did, meeting with the husband of a subject. Why wouldn't you look into that? I don't want to think this is partisan, but that makes me think it yeah. is. So I think there are two things here. One, there is a question of whether the investigation got the right result. And the inspector general doesn't have purview to look at that. And so he's not looking at that. And he's not looking at any questions. You know, he's not going to look at Jim Comey's motivations in the same way he wouldn't look at Loretta Lynch's motivations. You know, she would, they're not questioning whether in, in taking that meeting with Bill Clinton, it then led her to, to steer the outcome one direction. That's not in the, in the inspector general's point. Why? Because it's not, not what the inspector general does. And there have been no credible allegations of that. In, 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 well, in sure. Of course, they're credible yeah. enough that the attorney general says, well, I'm backing off from this investigation personally. Yeah, but when you have a unanimous recommendation from all the career officials, both at the FBI and at the Justice Department, that there shouldn't be any charges brought, that really was put to rest. What remains open, at least in an official standpoint, is whether Comey acted appropriately. And yes, the attorney general had somewhat recused herself. But that doesn't give Jim Comey the right to then flagrantly okay. violate okay. all the rules. Again, you have the right to have that opinion. I don't think it's a crazy opinion. I'm talking about the investigation announced today, whose only purpose, and you know it as well as I, is to discredit Donald Trump's victory in the presidential race. The point of this whole thing is to say, look, there's a cloud over it. It was unfair. That's the point. And why is that a point that Americans should pay for with their tax dollars? So I think there is a cloud over Donald Trump's victory. I think there are questions about the legitimacy of his, of his presidency. But I don't think that's what the inspector general is, is looking at. I don't think that's why he's doing it. In fact, if you look in the same announcement today, there are several things he's looking into that, that, that go to Democratic officials. There's a question, um, I think right. an unfair question, about, about an official who... Uh, Andrew McCabe, the deputy FBI yeah, director. Yeah, Andrew McCabe. He's looking into that, into that too, and, and whether he should have appropriately recused himself. So he's looking at things on, uh, really on both sides. But the sides. point, look, okay, so you, I'm, glad, I'm glad you conceded you think that Trump is potentially illegitimate. You tweeted this today. You said, was Trump duly elected? Of course he was. Was the election free and fair? By typical Western Democratic standards, absolutely not. You said, again, I'm not sure why it's not okay to tra question Trump's legitimacy. He was elected, but it wasn't fair and square. In what sense was it not fair and square? And why would you write something like that as a former public official? It, it wasn't fair and square in the sense that you had the intervention of the nation's top investigative official, Jim Comey, uh, 11 days before the election. That clearly had an impact on, on voters as they went to the, the, uh, the voting booths. And you had intervention by a foreign government that was seeking to subvert our democracy and elect Donald Trump, according to our intelligence Do you have agencies. any evidence at all that the intervention, as you described it, by Russia, and we're assuming that happened, I don't, I don't think it's a foregone fact, 
But do you have any evidence at all that that affected the election outcome in any way? You know, you'll never be able to definitively say, but, but political scientists that have looked at this already have said you can see a four-point drop in Clinton's poll numbers in the final days of the because election. Because of Russia? It's, it's, it's impossible, of course, to say Well, I can't prove that moon landing isn't real either, but no, I kind of assume it is because I know evidence to the contrary. Do you right. have evidence that Russia in any way affected the actual outcome? I, I think, I if, think you look, you if you look at the timing of Comey's, uh, I think you have to look at all these things together. If you look at the timing of Comey's letter, if you look at the, the, the continued stories that were coming out through WikiLeaks time and time again in the last 30 days of the election, and then you look at in those last 11 days, when all of those were, were, were coming to the forefront at the same time, a drop in Clinton. But you're poll. dodging my question it's fair, on no, Russia. It's, uh, well, it's, I mean, na name one fair. specific way that Russia affected the outcome of the election and give me one even scintilla of evidence that that actually happened. I don't think that exists. So I think, you know, this is a question of whether you assume that the intelligence agencies are correct in their assumption. This is the first thing. No, the intelligence agencies say Russia tried to do this. this You're is, saying no, this the they first, had the desired outcome right. by affecting the election itself. And right. you have no evidence that that's true. No, I'm saying you first have to assume that the intelligence agencies are right. If, the, if you assume that, then you have to look at what happened in the, at the end of the election when you had Trump repeatedly talking about WikiLeaks out on the campaign trail. If it, was, if, it, if it wasn't so effective, why was he talking about it all the time? I think he clearly so thought it would make a difference. I think he clearly thought it would make a difference because he wouldn't have been talking to voters about it all the time if he didn't. Well, he was, of course, you can never definitively say. You can never look and say there are a million things that are... But that you have no there. evidence at all. That's, I guess that's what that's, I'm saying. I mean, no, this I, stuff is studied. You can look at the timing and look at the timing of Clinton's drop in the polls in the last 11 days when, when all this is happening. I'm not and, saying Russia by itself. I'm saying Russia... Okay. Combined with the Look, I guess what's so frustrating here is that there's, there's no evidence this had an effect on the election. Now, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but we can't say that it did. And here you are saying it was not free and fair, which is a very big claim for someone who is widely believed, like you, a former public official, to make. But I would say this. Here's what we do know. Mrs. Clinton didn't have an economic message. The middle class did not vote for her. Huge parts of the country, the center of the country, non-rich people and non-poor people ignored her appeals. Wouldn't it be more fruitful if you're a Democrat to say, like, let's get an economic message. Like, let's I, listen to the middle class. I, I think it's possible to believe two things at once. I think all of those things are fair criticisms. I think you can point to mistakes that the Clinton campaign made. Many Clinton campaign officials have come out and said that after the election. All that can be true, and she could still have been headed for, to Really? Because I, I don't hear that. I was. haven't seen any. So, you're a smart well, guy. I saw, I saw their former spokesperson on TV earlier today. Where's the yes, so, we made look, mistakes. I'm not a shrink, so I hesitate to make a diagnosis of you or your party. But I see a group of people enraged and in deep denial and casting about for an explanation that doesn't implicate them. That's what I see. Do you see that? that no. Uh, <laughs> you don't I, see I, yeah, that. Of course. What I see, if I, when I talk to Democrats, I see Democrats all the time who talk about mistakes that the Clinton campaign made. They talk about the message wasn't clear enough. Like I said, the Clinton campaign spokesperson was on television today saying that. I just said it a minute ago. That doesn't mean... You're blaming that, that the system. Mean, no, it's that, not free and no, fair. I, I the just said, Russians I just, under the I bed. Just said it's they Jim Comey's fault. I just fault. said they made mistakes. But they made mistakes, and they still were headed to to, to But but okay. let's but let's 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 leave that aside for a quite, for for one second. It's still the fact that we're debating whether Comey had an impact or not. We should never be having this conversation. Okay, we never. But should the have election was the two months did. ago, and today we have a new investigation into this, whose only purpose is to make Democrats feel like you know what? It's not our fault. It's Jim. Comey. Let me ask you one last question. Do you think Jim Comey? acted, and you spoke for the Justice Department, acted in a way that was motivated by his personal politics? Um, in, in, if you mean partisan politics, no, I don't. I actually believe Jim Comey is a man of great integrity. But, I think, <laughs> but he needs to but, be investigated but, by but, the Inspector but, General. But, okay. but I think he believes so much in, in his own integrity, it, it crosses the line into self-righteousness sometimes, and it leads him to make the mistakes. Well, he's he not the only one in D.C. That's true. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.